10 of the most common questions from you guys about the next gen NCLEX and, and what you need to know about it. So if you are taking the next gen NCLEX, it is going to be very important for you to watch this video because the misinformation out there about this is it's unbelievable. And so I'm getting in my TikTok invoice, um, DMs, the things I'm hearing people post to my questions, all these, all these things. I'm going to address it tonight. So share this video, YouTube, Facebook. I got everybody watching. My name, let me introduce myself. My name is Professor Regina, okay, MSNRN. And I consider myself a next-gen expert because I have been studying for years for this test. And Mark and I have built the technology to help you guys with the next-gen NCLEX. So I'll be showing you guys all of that uh, amazing stuff. But we're talking 10 of the most common questions, 10 of the most common questions about NGN. And so this is my special report that I am putting out there. All right. So how about this? Whew. Question number one. Let me see if I can get in here on this thing. Can I get in here on this thing? Ah, if I could do side by side. No. Nah. All right. We're just going to have to roll with this. Okay. First question is this, guys. First question is this. All right. What are, what are the NGN question types? What is it? What are they? What are they? So there are there are, hold on, let me see if I can, there are five categories of the NGN question types. There are five categories of the NGN question types. And those categories, those categories are, those categories are the highlight, the drag and drop, the multiple choice, the drop down, and the multiple response, multiple response. And so, when I say that there is going to be an influx of new question types presented on your exam, this is what I mean, okay? And so not only the challenge of next-gen NCLEX for many of my nursing students, especially the repeat test takers, the challenge is not only are you gonna have to study for the exam, study the content, but you're gonna actually have to study the makeup of the exam, meaning, you're going to have to know you're going to have to know the new components that you are going to be tested on. And so, man, this is why we are here with our Remarners community. One thing I love about this community is that we have decided, hey, we're going to learn this together. We're going to contribute to our studying. We are going to put our ideas um, within the community and then we're going to share them. So five categories five categories on the test plan that you guys will want to know. And I'll say this, I'll say this, um, these questions you can learn. These question items you can learn. Many of you who have taken NCLEX, whether you passed or you felt it, you have seen them on the special research section. You have seen them on the special research section. So, um, these are not new questions. These are not new questions um, in content, but they will be new questions in your um, in your presentation. OK. All right. Let's go. Let's move on. So that was it. That, that was the, the idea. What are the NGN question types? So you have the, the highlighting table text, the drag and drop, which is a close. You have the multiple choice. You have the drop down, and the drop down can also um, come in a closed table or rationale. And then you have the multiple responses category as well. There's also standalone items such as bow tie and trend, bow tie and trend. And so hopefully during um, this presentation, I'll get to show you some of those question types. So that was question number one that I get from Remar nurses about next generation NCLEX. The second question that I get is, um, are all of the question types partial credit? Are all of the question types partial credit? And the answer to this, I, I, I'm not sure if you know that, but 
Yes, most of them are partial credit. There is only one question type that is not partial credit, and that is the what? That is going to be the multiple choice, the multiple choice one, or in other words, the single choice items. So you have multiple choices, but only one is right. And so that will not be considered a partial credit item because you can only get one point for those questions, okay? But everything else is going to be partial credit, partial credit. Are you guys following me? Also, go ahead and put your questions in the comments as well because you might ask me a new question that I haven't gotten an opportunity to answer for you guys and it will, it will help the entire community that is here. The entire community is here. Again, share this video for all of your nursing friends who you know who have to take NextGen NCLEX. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so, YouTube or TikTok, because I am definitely going to be doing something every day in relationship to NextGen NCLEX, okay? All right, so partial credit for all of the question types except for the multiple choice item, the multiple choice item. So then since we know all that, since we know all that, then the question becomes this. Is partial credit a good thing? People say that, <laughs> Professor Regina, is this a good thing? And the answer to that is before we can determine whether it's a good thing or not a good thing, let's talk about um, let's talk about this, the different ways that the partial credit will be given. Okay. Um, shout out to my Remar nurse says, I gave God the glory and thank you. I passed my NCLEX RN with you, V2, at 77 questions. Congratulations. I pause all, all education to spotlight Remar nurses who have passed with my program and come back and let us know that you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. So shout out to you, Nurse Janet. I'm proud of you. All right. Um, so let's go back to this. Now, this is extremely important for you guys to know that there are three ways that partial credit will be recognized for the candidate taking the next-gen NCLEX. The first is zero-one scoring. Zero-one scoring means that there will be one point for each correct response and zero points for each incorrect response, okay? One point for each correct response, zero points, for each incorrect response. So that's a good partial credit, right? That's good partial credit. If you are able to get four points for one question, but you only choose, you know, two correct answers, then you can get two points, all right? And that means if you pick two answers that were not correct, no biggie, no biggie, because you're not going to lose any points for incorrect answers. So whenever you see the zero one scoring question type, like select the number that apply, right? That's a zero one. Bow tie items are zero one, right? And these are the things that you learn when we study together, right? I'm constantly talking about this. Whenever you see certain question types, then you know, hey, I can be free to Go with my first mind and I don't have to be anxious about this question type, all right? So that's the zero one scoring. I hope that makes sense to you. The plus or minus is the one that I think creates a little bit of anxiety in nursing students because this is really new. This is you get one point for each correct response that you do, but a point will be subtracted for each incorrect response, okay? So yes, we are cheering for these select all that apply, like everybody likes select all that apply, right? Um, and everybody's excited that they are partial credit, but now if you choose an incorrect item, 
then that will be a deduction of points from what you got right. So currently, select all that apply. If there's three answers, you have to choose all three of them to get a point, right? But for next gen, with select all that apply questions, you will gain a point for what you choose that is right, and then you will lose a point for items that are not right. So they can work against each other. If you pick two that are right, you get two points. But if you pick two that are wrong, you lose those two points and you don't end up with anything. So is that better? Do you guys like that one? Is that is that better for you guys? I don't know. It's like, which one is better? Having to get all of them right or getting some right with some credit, but then points taken away. So that is how, and I think that was a question that I, I typically get, that is how select all that apply questions will be different, okay? That is how select all that apply questions will behave on next gen NCLEX. So you can make your decision. But the thing is, now you know. Before, a lot of you may not have even known that that was how it was going to work. So now you know, which is why I'm so grateful that you guys all come to my classes when I get on, um, when I get on live. All right. The last way that you can be scored is particularly for rationale questions, all right? And this is where you get one point if you get and only if you get both of those paired responses correct. So X, Y questions, right? All right, X, Y questions. And I see that question here. Um, oh, you know what? Mark just left. Mark, I need you. <laughs> I need you to come back in here. This is live, live TV, guys, just so you know. Can you take that off of there? I don't want to do it here anymore. Mm -hmm. the yeah. Oh, just the whole thing? Yeah, can you take it away? Yeah. Pause for the cost, please. Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just take it off. Okay, I wanted to take that off so you guys can see the entire screen. You guys know who I am now, Professor Regina. Okay, let me go to the comments now. So this is this is a comment right here that I want to address because this is all about me answering questions about next gen. So I have some prepared, but I'm also going to take your live questions too. What advice would you give new graduates? How does one prep for NCLEX? Okay, so very simply, if you are taking next gen NCLEX, the very best thing you can do for yourself is do an NCLEX review. Okay, that's the very best thing you can do. I would say start with the NCLEX review program like mine that is going to give you content plus questions. And we'll get, we'll get into why the next gen questions are going to be so important for you guys because I uh, one of the questions that you know I'm going to be answering tonight is uh, you know, is this really going to be a big deal for us? Should I really be focused on questions? And so my answer to that will be coming up. All right. Okay, now let's go to the next question because we talked about the scoring type. Here's another question that I get. You guys ready for it? It's this. Is this true? Is it true that only 2023 graduates have to take next gen NCLEX? And my answer to that is no, it is not true. It is not true. The truth is, starting April 1st, every candidate who has to take NCLEX will be taking the next-gen NCLEX. And when I got this message in my inbox, it was kind of shocking to me. And I thought to myself, man, there are some people who are not like prepared for this exam. And so they're trying to rationalize their way out of having to take it, right? And so it's like... Uh, the person actually said that they heard that because they graduated in 2020, right, that they didn't have to take next gen. Next gen was only for 2023 graduates. So no, that is not true. Everybody who is taking NCLEX after April 1st will get this next gen iteration of it, okay? All right, so that's not true. Next question I get, guys, is this. I felt the regular NCLEX 
I graduated a long time ago. Can I pass next gen? Great question. Repeat test takers. You have to take this exam serious. You can absolutely pass it. Absolutely. You have to take this exam serious. You can pass it. However, it is going to be a big investment. It's going to require more of you than the current NCLEX. And that's why I have been saying, that's why I have been saying, don't let this exam catch you slipping. I said that. I said, if you're a repeat test taker, do everything you can to take this current NCLEX. But however, it don't matter. Now we're here where you have to take next gen. So if you fail NCLEX in the past, then whatever you did before, understand that's going to have to be, you know, have to forget about it. You have to totally forget about it because you're going to get a new test. Literally this time, you know, you're going to get a new test. <laughs> so big investment into yourself, meaning that anything that's going to distract you from this exam, you got to put it away. You got to put it away. Your friends are going out. You can't go, right? You you may not be able to, you know, celebrate the holidays like you want. Easter coming up and you, you know, you go out loud and get your kids big Easter baskets and new clothes to wear to church and get everybody's hair done. You can't do all that right now, okay? You have to invest in yourself. You got to get an NCLEX review. You got to get this next gen. This is the thing. You need to be getting an NCLEX review with next generation technology, meaning you will have practice questions in front of you. All right. You will get the content that you need is content It's content It's content and questions, content and questions. All right. All right. Um, and so, yes, you can pass the exam as a repeat test taker. There will be repeat test takers that pass the exam. However, you cannot do it with the same things that you did before. Yesterday's NCLEX review is not today's NCLEX review. I literally mean that. Whatever people was doing yesterday to help you pass NCLEX, all these reviews out here, is not the same. It's not the same, guys. It's not the same. But you as the nursing student have to take responsibility for who you're studying with. It's a lot of scammers right now doing NCLEX reviews. A lot. They on here right now asking you to contact them, study with them. Y'all have to be even more wise, even more wise than you were previously in who you are choosing to spend your time with as a repeat test taker when it comes to studying. So that was the question. I failed the regular NCLEX. I graduated a long time ago. Can I pass next gen NCLEX? Can I pass next gen NCLEX? Okay. Um, and so the answer is absolutely yes. I'm moving on. This is a very new question that I've been getting. It's about another NCLEX review. And I don't know if it's right or not, but a lot of the comments on my TikTok videos is saying, you know, um, Mark K said next gen is only 10% of NCLEX. So it should only be like 10% or I should only be worried about it. And I don't even know if he really said that, but that's what people are saying to me. They're saying, um, Mark K said that it's only 10% of NCLEX. And so um, I should, or can I just study with regular questions? So I just wanna clarify this because the 10% is right. However, the 10% only refers to standalone items, okay? So that means that um, you can get between five and 11 questions that will be next-gen items, all right? However, all of your case studies are going to be next-gen items. So that's 18 questions right there guaranteed that will be next gen items. If you add another 11 to that, that is 29 questions. Third, like 29 questions of the minimum that you can get. Like, so, you know, if you're getting, if you're getting 85 questions in total, say you do the minimum, you get 85 questions, 29 of those questions are going to be next gen NCLEX. That's a huge percent of your test, okay? So 
that means that 10% is only talking about the standalone items. It's not talking about the exam in totality. So if you are not practicing next-gen NCLEX, that's 29 questions that you have never encountered before. That's a lot. So <laughs> when you talk about anxiety, anxiety is having the assumption that you're not going to get a lot of next-gen questions and then getting in front of the actual exam and getting over 20 next-gen questions. And if you read the test plan, you know that those questions can come at any time, right? They can come back to back to back to back to back. Also, also, you're going to get case studies that are going to be all next gen. Six questions, six questions at a time that are going to be all next gen. So I think, okay, I think that everybody, or let me say this, people may tell you that it's just 10%. But I'm telling you that it's much more than that, okay? I'm telling you that it's much more than that and that you should take it very serious. And if you are not anxious about it, and anxiety is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we use anxiety to always be a negative emotion. Anxiety is not a negative emotion if it pushes you into a better situation, right? So if a bear or somebody with a gun comes into this room and I start to feel anxiety, that's a good thing. That's the kind of anxiety I want to have, right? Because it's going to move me to want to get out of that situation. So I want you guys to have the type of anxiety that wants to push you out of this uncomfortable place of being a nursing student, not passing this test. Anxiety, you know, should make you want to get up and study because you don't want to be here anymore. If you've been struggling with this test for three, four years, you need some anxiety in your life because you must be really comfortable not having a nursing license. So I just wanted to clarify this because I keep seeing it um, on, on my comments, on my videos, and I think that there is some understanding that could take place about actually what this means when you say 10% of NCLEX is next gen. Again, that's only... 10% of your standalone items, not your case studies. All of your case studies, the 18 questions that you absolutely will get, you will absolutely get 18 questions that will be next gen. So another question that I get, okay, um, is how different is next gen from the current NCLEX? And there are, uh, there are some features that are similar that I like. OK, some features that are the same about current NCLEX and next gen that I appreciate. The first is that you're going to get 15 questions that are pretest. They don't even count. OK, so 15 of your questions won't count. The only bad thing is you don't know which questions are pretest. So I always tell you guys this. If you get a test in front of you. Um, and it's a question you don't know, just in your mind, instead of getting all freaked out and worried and stressed that you don't know it, just say, ah, that was a pretest question and keep moving because what it does is it keeps you positive. And with God, all things are possible. So 15 of those questions on your exam won't even count. You still get five hours of time. So current NCLEX, you get five hours. Next gen NCLEX, you get five hours. We're talking right now about the most common questions about <laughs> next gen NCLEX. So get this video out, share it, because these are questions that you guys ask me every day. Five hours. What I think about the five hours is that um, kind of it is what it is. Like it is what it is. From the research that has been done by NCSBN, they are saying that these questions should only be taking you one to two minutes to do. Now, I think that one to two minutes is possible. I do think that one to two minutes is possible with a lot of practice, right? So that's why I'm saying Content is going to be very important because if I'm reading an electronic health record and I'm reading two paragraphs of, of a nurse's note, 
I need to be extremely familiar with every term, the condition, okay, the medications. And so the only way I'm going to be able to do that is by having content information about what I'm reading. Because with case studies, the way they are written, they don't tell you what the patient is dealing with. They won't say, this is a case study about congestive heart failure. It's not going to say that. It's going to say your patient came in, they're sleeping in a chair, they're coughing up blood tinge sputum. And so you're reading all this like, "Uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm recognizing the cues. I know where I'm going, right? But if you don't know these conditions, you're going to be reading this. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to read it again, trying to look for something to help you. Okay. So content is going to be extremely important. You only get that in lectures. You're not going to get that in a question bank, especially if you're a repeat test taker. I'm pretty much, this is the channel for repeat test takers. Honestly, I'm trusting that nursing school, they're doing what they're supposed to do. You new graduates, y'all are learning about next gen. Um, you are doing practice questions on the computer, all that stuff. Y'all got all that stuff, right? That's what I'm trusting. My repeat test takers who have been out of school, you don't have the technology, you don't have an instructor, you're not in class or whatever. So this is where we come to learn how to prepare for next gen NCLEX. This is my audience, right? If you're in a nursing school and you're not learning about next gen, come on, come on here. We'll talk about it. But specifically for my tests, my repeat test takers, um, these are things that you will want to know when you're sitting down studying. All right. Um, so that is five hours. You're going to get five hours. It's, it's nothing we can do about it. It's the same. So let's just get through it. Um, computer adaptive testing variable length. That is going to be the same as what we have here. Everybody's test is going to be based on their ability. Everybody's test is going to be a variable length. Some people may have 85 questions. Some people may have 150 questions. You got to be prepared for both. I mean, that is the ideal situation that you go in there, 85 questions, and you out. And you passed it, okay? But there is also there is also those who will go in there, 85 questions, and they may struggle. They may not be so comfortable. So I want you guys to be comfortable. Um, shout out to Nurse Ravine. Hello, Remar nurses. I wanted to quickly come by and say I passed my NCLEX. Quick facts and V2 are the truth. Thank you, Regina. Hey, Ravine, can you tell me how long it took you to get through the program? Because I have it as a four-week program, but I know people have been doing it a little bit quicker in two weeks. Um, so just let me know. I'm just trying to gauge on how long it took you to do it. All right. All right. Um, Here we go. Next question. Oh, no, no. Next question. We're still on this one. Here it is. Also, the ways that you pass the exam are going to be the same. The confidence interval, 95 percent confidence interval, the running out of time rule where you run out of time, but the exam looks at your performance and makes a determination. Um, And then the max number of items where you take um, the entire exam right? And then it looks at how you did on the exam. All right. Um, So these are all possibilities and people pass every day with these types of questions, these types of questions. Um, Actually, I was on a plane and I don't know if I could pull it up, but I was on a plane and I got a text message from a Remar nurse that I had met in Atlanta. His name is um, Marius. And he told me that he had just passed and he had all, um, all, he had all 145 questions. And, um, I just, I'm just so proud of him. This is, this is what he sent me. And, um, I pulled up this picture of he and I, we met in Atlanta and he was just so excited that he is now an RN. So shout out to Marius for passing NCLEX with all 145 items. Okay. The, um, The differences, though, okay, the differences are the number of questions, the number of questions. So before you had a minimum of 75, a maximum of 145. That's what's currently happening. For next gen, your minimum is going to be 85, 
right? And your maximum will be 150, okay? So those are a little bit different, a little bit of increase, looking a little PN-ish with that um, 85, P, uh, 85 questions for both. Y'all have to realize this is actually pretty good because when I took NCLEX, the maximum you could get was 265 questions. So now the maximum you're going to get is 150? What? <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. We'll take it. Also, case studies. So you will have case studies on the next gen NCLEX. And you guys know that is three case studies. You can have up to five, though three case studies that will be counted and there will be six questions each. All right. This is, this is for RN and PN. So if you're just here and you're like, what is this? I'm talking about NCLEX RN and NCLEX PN. Both of you guys, both of you guys will take the, um, the next gen NCLEX. All right. Uh, all right. So yes, we're both. Thank you. So Nurse Ravine came back, said, I used the V2 and finished all the lectures in three weeks. Cool. So you turned my four week program into three weeks and you passed your NCLEX exam. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's the type of dedication you need to have in order to get these results. Thank you so much. Wow. Amazing. All right. Um, standalone items. These are items that are not part of a case study. So you will have, um, well, you have 60 to 130. All right. And now you will have 52 to 117, 52 to 117. All right, well, let's go on to the next question, which is this. Lots of, lots of confusion here. Um, are these new question types only for case studies? So remember, I told you guys, these are all the new question types that you will get. Highlight, text, highlight in a table form. Kind of the same thing you're highlighting. Drag and drop. You're going to have a closed drag and drop, or you could do rationale drag and drop. And that's where you're moving the answer into the right position. All right. All these things. Okay. And that's why I'm saying you need to be doing these question types on a computer because they all affect your mental. They all affect your mental, right? Taking that cursor, moving it, right? Having confidence that you're doing it right, like all of these things are going to be important for you to do in a question bank. Um, the multiple choice. And remember I said multiple choice. They call it multiple choice because there's multiple choices, <laughs> but only one answer is right. So it should really be called single choice, but it's not. It's multiple choice. And this is the only one that does not have partial credit, okay? Okay. This is the only one that does not have um, partial credit. The multiple, the matrix multiple choice though, does have partial credit. Drop down, you can have a drop down close, a drop down table, a rationale. Multiple response. Multiple response is another term for select all that apply, okay? So multiple choice is not select all that apply. Multiple response is select all that apply. Watch, watch me here. Watch me, follow me, never lose me, okay? So there are two types of multiple responses that you can have for next gen. The multiple response that gives you a number, like select five that apply, or the multiple response, all of them. And that's up to you to figure out how many are right, okay? Um, multiple response within a group. This is, uh, usually seen in a table format, but you have to choose several correct answers, which in, which is in a group. So in my question bank, um, how I write these questions, I'll say, um, which diet is appropriate for this group. And there are like two different types of diets that you could pick low protein, and fluid restrictions. And then there'll be another group and I'll say which medications are most appropriate for this patient, okay? And then, so you would select from that group of items, all right? And then of course the matrix multiple response is in the rows and you'll pick uh, several different conditions or items um, in the rows, all right? Moving on, moving on, all right. 
Next question is this. During a case study, can I go back and forth? So for NCLEX, no. Remember this, and this is just in general for NCLEX questions. Um, during the case study, you will have everything that you need to answer that question on the page. So you don't have to go back and forth to other questions in order to get that answer. So have that mentality, like everything that you need, everything that you need to answer a question is going to be right in front of you, right in front of you. All right. So there's no need for you to go back and forth. You shouldn't even be thinking about it. Right when you are taking your NCLEX exam, psh, like once a question is over, forget about it. Don't think about it. Reset for a new question. That should be your mentality. Okay. Um, and then this is the final question. I'm not going to hold you guys tonight. This is the final question. Is this, is next gen NCLEX harder? Is it harder? <laughs> Okay. Um, and I said to this, it's a, it's a tough question. No and yes. Okay. No, it won't be harder in content. The content is going to be the same. The content is going to be the same. Why is content going to be the same? Because nursing has not changed. You know, it hasn't changed. And when I look at the practice analysis of nurses, they're still pretty much doing the same things they were three years ago, right? We're still doing the same things. However, what will be more difficult, again, especially for my repeat test takers or those of you who are not currently in school, which will be more difficult is you amassing the knowledge, right? Getting the content and not just having it in front of you, right? You can have this book in front of you. You can have quick facts for NCLEX. Great, you have it. But getting it in here into your mind is sometimes a challenge. It's sometimes a challenge because you're not in the studying mood. You don't feel like studying. But let me tell you this. Most of the things you don't feel like doing are probably the best for you. They're probably getting you to where you need to be, even though you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like working out, but guess what? When you work out, it's better for you. It's better for your health. All right, let me get off that hobby horse. Y'all got to study quick facts. Y'all have to have it memorized. You buy it, but you don't study it. You buy it and you take it everywhere, but you don't commit it to memory. You got to do it, okay? So what, what is going to be harder, even though the content is going to be the same, but getting that content in your mind. Also, the presentation style, okay? the presentation style will be harder because we're not used to reading a chart on a timed exam, okay? Um, more critical thinking is gonna be required <laughs> because they're gonna, questions are not gonna be which potassium level is irregular anymore, right? They're gonna give you the potassium levels. They're gonna give you the red blood cell count, the platelets, right? So if your patient has cytopenia, you're going to be able to tell right away that they got cytopenia, but you're going to have to interpret what type of cytopenia is it, right? And what is the priority between, you know, oxygenation or cytopenia or pneumothorax or whatever it is, right? So that's going to be more challenging, Um so more critical thinking is going to be required. Also doing more practice questions, doing more practice questions. That is going to be required of you. That's going to be required just because that presentation style needs to be mastered. All right. So what other questions do you guys have? Okay. What other questions do you have? Reading a chart in history may take time. Ex absolutely. Reading these charts uh, that you will get is going to take time. And so this year, this isn't, this is it. This is another question I get because I do a lot of teaching on quick facts and I do a lot of teaching in my question bank. People are always asking me, what app are you teaching from? When y'all see it on, um, when y'all see it on TikTok, when y'all see it <laughs> on Facebook, they're always asking me like, what, what app is it 
is it coming from? And y'all know when y'all see the all black background, what time it is, okay? My background is all black for a reason. Y'all already know what time it is when you see this background. So this is actually V2. This is actually my NCLEX review. And um, I developed it for next gen. I developed it for the next gen NCLEX review. All right. Um, and so if you don't have it, you need to be in front of it. You don't have a lot of time to prepare for this exam. I want you to get it, okay? I want you to get it so that you can begin studying it. And I'll actually, um, what I'll do is I'll go inside of my platform right now. So I logged in and I just went right to my question bank, okay? And so this is my question bank in V2. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is the question bank in V2. Now, I, 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 have the questions here, but honestly, what's more important and what I really want you to focus on is my lectures because I think the lectures make it more comfortable in a question bank. Now in the question bank, I'm sorry, here it is. This is a lot of information. I write my case studies according to the way that we were encouraged to write case studies in from NCBSN. Every nurse instructor should have case studies for you because they told us how to write them years ago. Two years ago, they said, if you're preparing a case study, it should have this, 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 and this in it, and this order. So when you're in my question bank and you say, oh man, this is a lot of stuff. No, this is the right amount of stuff. Okay. And then when you go to the lab values, right? Mm, this is the right amount of lab values when you're looking at it. It's important for you a patient comes in and says the nurse is caring for a client with flank pain and dysuria. Do you know what flank pain and dysuria are? And if you do, then you will know why the white blood cell count is important and the urinalysis is important. And the things in the urinalysis is important. And so when I talk about how, man, next gen is going to be all, the case studies are going to be all the next gen items, this is considered a rationale. OK, a rationale. And if we go back to our scoring method, you know, if you get a rationale question, you have to get both items right to get one point. So it's very important for you to be able to read a question and know, OK, this is a rationale question. So that means that these two items go together. OK, these two items that go together and I get I get it right or I get it wrong, but I'm only getting one point. OK. These are, these are the types of things that you need to be doing, let me, to prepare for next-gen NCLEX, especially if you're a repeat test taker, especially if you're a repeat test taker. You need to have the ability to go in and study practice questions. And that's not all you do, okay? That's not all you do, but it is so helpful. It's so helpful, all right? What else, what other questions do you have for me? And so again, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you guys to get into my question bank, get into the content lectures because they go together. All right, they go together. Now I am on a, um, I'm on a laptop when I do questions for my question bank. So if I'm trying to do it on an iPad or a cell phone, you know, I say do it on the laptop because when you take NCLEX, you're gonna take it on a desktop. You're gonna take it on a desktop computer. So. Practice doing it on a computer. That's what I would say. All right. Practice doing it on the computer. So to highlight anything from my question bank, you just select it and then you go to highlight. Okay. You select the item and then you go to highlight. And that's how you do it. Okay. Highlight the entire sentence. All right, and then if you don't want to highlight it and you want to make, I'm, I made a mistake, that's not what I want it to do, you just click off of it and then you try again, okay? But there is such a benefit. There, maybe I just want to highlight all of this, okay? Let me highlight it. Let me do this again, hold on. All right, there is such a benefit, all right, to 
to being able to do practice questions. All right. And watch the scammers, y'all. Please watch the scammers because they are absolutely looking to take advantage of nursing students. All right. Um, but content, 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 content is how you're going to pass next gen NCLEX. And I want to just encourage you guys to understand that this test is changing April 1st. April 1st, the test is changing. And so we need to, all right, we need to be prepared for it. We need to be prepared for it. And the way you be prepared for it is making that investment into yourself with time. I want you guys not to have to struggle anymore into this. All right. I want you guys to have to not have to worry about, am I going to get my nursing license this year? It's it's honestly as fun as I try to make it to study for NCLEX. It could be tiring sometimes when you're doing it for months at a time, when you're doing it for years at a time. There is no easy. Yeah, exactly. There's no we, easy way out of studying. You have to do it. But if you do it for a short period of time, if you invest in yourself a short period of time, then you are able to go ahead and get the ability to sit in front of the test and not be afraid because you've done what you needed to do. All right. Go to remarnurse.com. You can check out um, the V2 from remarnurse.com. And the price is amazing. OK, the price is amazing. Eighty nine dollars for three months into the program, three months into the program. And um, this is the special that we're running right now. OK. All right. <laughs> OK. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, you know, you can always do support support at remarreview.com. If you guys have not committed to a study system and you are taking next gen, I can only say this so many times. You will be prepared a lot faster if you use a study system that has a study calendar for you content and lectures. All right. Those are the things that are going to help streamline, streamline your experience. Man. Okay. That's all I got to say. <laughs> like just let's make this, let's make this entire situation an easy one. People say, hey, are you, you know, are you expecting NCLEX pass rates to go down? Are you expecting a lot of people to fail? I think that with, you know, with, if nursing schools are doing what they're supposed to do, if nursing schools are preparing their students with next gen um, materials, if they are discussing case studies, even if they're just lecturing on the items that are on the actual NCLEX, then I think that the NCLEX passing rates can stay the same, if not even move up. But repeat test takers who go into this exam blindly, either because they don't think that they have to take next gen or they don't think that the next gen items are going to be that big of a portion of their exam, it's going to be tough. Okay. It's going to be tough. And that's the last thing I want. Everybody that has good intentions toward you guys as nursing students and are not just trying to take advantage of you or scam you or whatever, they want you to pass. They, they really want you to have success. Nobody, you know, nobody with any good intentions want you guys to be studying for months and months and discouraged and all and all those things. They don't want that. So do what you guys need to do. And I'm saying that very blankly. And and it's not difficult. It's not going to be difficult if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. Number one, being consistent. This is not something you can study for. Put it down for a week or two and come back with it and think that you're going to make extreme progress. You're not. You're not going to make progress like that. Nurse Ravine that came on said she did my program in three weeks. That's because she was consistent. She was consistent. All right. Um, and so that's what you have to commit to. 
You have to commit to being consistent and doing the work. And I know it's not easy. We are totally, I'm, I'm next gen NCLEX out. I'm reading stuff every day about it. I'm answering questions every day about it. So nobody's more tired of studying for next gen NCLEX than me. And we not even, haven't even started it. Okay. <laughs> so um, get in, get in, get in, get in. All right. Um, so we talk about, I don't know if I can go back. Let me see. We are talking about, we are talking about how to, how to prepare for next gen NCLEX. And if you came in, you just came, came on, I gave you guys the top questions that I'm getting for, from nursing students about next gen NCLEX. All right. So into next night. Yeah. I'm just giving out questions and answers. Again, if you need something specifically, Okay. If you need something specifically, please reach out to me. Support at remarreview.com. Tonight's topic, I'm sorry, it wasn't multiple sclerosis because it's a 10 day, it's 10 days until next gen NCLEX. I did a special report on the top 10 questions that I get about next gen NCLEX. So actually, if you want to read about multiple sclerosis, you can do so in Quick Facts. See what page it's on. If you guys have quick facts, what page is it on? What page is multiple sclerosis on? Who wrote this book? All right. It's on page 39. Okay. Can you see it? So you can read about multiple sclerosis here. Am I here every day? Thank you, 39. <laughs> Am I here every day? No, I'm not here every day. I am doing live classes on Monday and Wednesday nights, Monday nights at noon. Uh, Monday days at noon, Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern time, okay? Um, and so I'm usually here with you guys teaching a live class. My NCLEX review comes with a component of lectures, all right? So it's an online platform. If you go to remarnurse.com, it is an online platform where you will be able to get all of my lectures, okay? Like I told you, lecturing is very important to me. I might even play one um, tonight, but lecturing is so important. So not only do you get my question bank, but you get all of my lectures plus practice exams, okay? Very, very important. I love the question bank too. Y'all saw the question bank. That's great, but the lectures are where it's at. The lectures are where it's at. So um, when you get into my program, Start with the lecture, start with the study calendar. Let me show you the study calendar if I can really quickly and then I'll let you guys go. All right, if you go to your file vault here, it says courses, question bank, file vault. If you click on file vault and you go to the registered nurse resources, if you're a practical nurse, then uh, you'll choose the practical nurse program and that will be practical nurse resources, okay? And you just click on that. You can get your daily study calendar here Another one is you can also get your student workbook here. Mm -hmm. All right. And NCLEX resources there. All right. But here is the daily study calendar that you get. And you just go here to download it. I think I probably downloaded it more than once. Um, and when you open it up, You'll get the daily study calendar, guys, and you will be able to know what exactly you're doing, all right, in every single study session. You do one study session per day. If you do one study session a day, then guess what? You will finish my program in, okay, you will finish my program in four weeks. If you just do one of these study sessions a day, watch, read, answer, that's it. OK, you'll finish my program in four weeks. Now, if you do two study sessions a day, three study sessions a day, which I, I don't recommend, but it seems like you guys are doing that, um, then you'll finish the program sooner and you'll be able to pass NCLEX like Nurse Ravine that got on here today. All right. So check it out. You should have any program that you're working with should give you a plan, not just a whole bunch of stuff to do but a structure on how to do it. So if accountability and structure is something that you need, I got you, okay? I got you. So go there, 
And then when you go back to the lectures, like study session number eight says you're going to watch positions, disaster management, herbal medications. Those are three videos. And you guys know my videos are not long. Okay. So when you go there, you just go back to the courses. You're going to look for positions, herbal management, positions, disaster management, herbal medications. Okay. All right. Um, and you can go just click on my website, remarnurse.com to get the lectures and all the questions. Okay. All right. So that's it. All right. That is it, guys. I'm going to end the broadcast so you can go do what you need to do. As always, reach out, support at readmyreview.com for specific questions. Also, follow me on YouTube or TikTok so that I can, um, you know, communicate and know what to do. Maybe, maybe, um, you know, in a couple of days, there are going to be new questions that Remar nurses are asking me. And so we're just committed here to learning about next gen together, preparing for it, doing what we need to do, everything to prepare for this test. It's a new test, but we can still have the same mentality, which is I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. I can, I will, I must pass NCLEX. So do what you need to do, guys. If you need to get into the V2, Go to remarnurse.com and I will see you later. Bye-bye.